In this segment, we move to ionic equilibria, or the equilibrium reactions involving ions. In this video lecture, we'll focus on what are buffers and how they work, and in later videos, we'll cover acid-base titration curves that really bring together all the concepts we've learned so far in acid-base reaction chemistry. And then at the end, we shift gears and take on a slightly different topic where we look at the equilibria that describes the solubility of ionic compounds. In this course, a buffer is a solution that can resist or minimize pH changes from the addition of an acid or a base. And typically, buffer solutions are made up of a weak acid and its conjugate base. The weak acid inside the buffer can help protect against any added base by reacting with the base to neutralize it. Likewise, the conjugate base in the buffer can help protect against any added acid by neutralizing it as well. This type of neutralization reactions that buffers do is really important for maintaining a constant pH, which itself is important to life. So in the human body, our blood pH has to be tightly regulated to stay within a specific small range. And if we don't, this can be detrimental and lead to disease and to more extremes of pH can even lead to death. There are many buffering systems inside the human blood, including proteins and hemoglobin. But one I like to point out is carbonic acid and its conjugate base bicarbonate. And this is an interesting acid because we make it from the CO2 that we breathe out. If we simply have some CO2 in our blood, it can react with water to form the acid. And then this acid can have an acid-base equilibrium with bicarbonate. The levels of bicarbonate in our human body is regulated through the kidneys. Because bicarbonate is usually found in a salt, um, these would have to be excreted through urine. Let's imagine we start with a buffer with equal amounts of the weak acid, HA, and its conjugate base, A-. And the bar graph down here is representative of their concentration, and initially we start with equal amounts. To this buffer, we can add the strong base hydroxide, and hydroxide being a base can react with acid in a neutralization reaction to form water. And so you can imagine that if hydroxide is added, some of the weak acids will react away to form water and generate the conjugate base, A-. And in this new equilibrium, we can see that some of the weak acid was reacted away, and so the concentration drops below the initial value. But because we form conjugate base in this neutralization reaction, the conjugate base concentration rises above the initial value. Instead of hydroxide, a buffer solution can also withstand changes from the addition of a strong acid, such as the hydronium ion. Hydronium ion being an acid would react with the base present in the solution. So A- would neutralize the added hydronium ion to form water and also generate some of the weak acid, HA. And so we would lose some A- and gain some HA. We would see the concentration of A- drop below the initial value, but because we formed the weak acid in this neutralization reaction, we expect that concentration of HA to rise above the initial value. In both of these scenarios, the added hydroxide and the added hydronium ions are basically reacted away by using either the weak acid or its conjugate base inside the buffer. A while ago, we looked at the Ka reaction for acetic acid, dissociating in water to form the hydronium ion. And we wanted to solve for the pH of a 0.05 molar solution of acetic acid. And to do so, we had to use an ICE table. 
and got a pH of 3.02, which is acidic but represents a very small amount of formed hydronium ions. And that means the change from our initial conditions to equilibrium is just slightly to the products because this equilibrium favors the reactants. For buffers, we can solve a similar kind of problem where now we want to solve for the pH of a buffer system. So for instance, a buffer system may be composed of both acetic acid and its conjugate base, sodium acetate. Now, the reaction for this buffer system looks just like the one for acid dissociation. But now we begin with acetate being present in the solution, and that will have an effect on the overall equilibrium. So we can think of this problem with the buffer system as a two-step process. Let's say we start with this first equilibrium where we let the weak acid dissociate, reach equilibrium, and we have a pH of 3.02. At that point, we have a disturbance where we add 0 0.20 molar sodium acetate. Mm -hmm. By Le Chatis principle, if you had a system at equilibrium and you add more products, then the position of the equilibrium will shift away from products and towards the reactant. This is called the common ion effect because acetate, the ion, is already present in the original equilibrium and it's being added. And so this would disfavor the formation of more acetate and instead push the equilibrium position even more towards the reactants. And that's represented by this little green arrow. Well, if we favor reactants, then we disfavor both products, and that means we form even less hydronium ions. And so we would expect the pH of this buffer system to be greater than 3.02 or more basic. We can fully solve for the pH of this buffer solution by setting up an ICE table here, where just like before, we have the Ka reaction showing the presence of acetic acid and its conjugate base. The only clear difference now is that in addition to acetic acid, we also have a good starting amount of sodium acetate. The hydronium ion product is basically nil at initial times. And so this reaction will move to the right to build in this product. So for change, we have minus X for the weak acid and plus X for these two products. And then summing these two rows, we get these values for their equilibrium concentration. Now, because Ka is a small number and because of the common ion effect, we expect X to be a very, very small number. And we can make then the appropriate approximation that both the concentration of acetic acid and acetate will stay the same at equilibrium relative to their initial concentrations. Moving towards the Ka expression, we can use this to solve for X, which is the hydronium ion concentration. And then we can solve for pH by plugging in the concentration of hydronium ion. So coming back to the Ka expression, we can fill in these equilibrium values and we get this equality on the left and that's equal to the Ka value. Solving for X, indeed we get an even smaller number of 4.5 times 10 to the minus six. X represents the concentration of hydronium ion. We can get the pH just by taking the minus log of X, and that gives us ultimately a value of 5.35. And so indeed, by having acetate present, we do raise the pH above 3.02. And the difference between these two pH values when acetate is not present initially versus when it is, 
can really show how significant the common ion effect can be and that having acetate present at initial times really retards this reaction moving towards the right in addition to having a small Ka value. The pH of a buffer solution can be directly solved using a henderson hasselbalch equation. This equation shown here where the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the ratio of the conjugate base to the weak acid. It is derived from the Ka expression by rearranging and then taking the minus log. And generally, it is valid but difficult to use in situations that are not buffers uh, because we have to use the IC table to determine the equilibrium concentrations of these two species. Oftentimes, this equation is written much more generally where the pH is equal to the pKa plus log of the base over the conjugate acid. So this will now also apply to when we have weak bases like amines or ammonia that are neutral and their conjugate acids, which are formally cationic. So coming back to this question of solving for the pH, now instead of using an IC table, we can just plug directly into the henderson hasselbalch equation. And this works because in a buffer, we have a very small x, and that allows us to make two important approximations, that both the concentration of the weak acid and its conjugate base at equilibrium are equal to their initial amounts. And so one way of rewriting the henderson hasselbalch equation is to say that these equilibrium concentrations are equivalent to their initial concentrations. And then we can simply plug in the value for pKa, that would be the minus log of the Ka. And then for the ratio of the conjugate base to the acid, that would be 0.2 molar over 0.05 molar. And then further solving, we would get that the pH is equal to 5.35. So this is a really nice, quick way to solve for the pH of buffers because we can entirely skip using the ICE table. Two important properties of buffers are its capacity and range. The buffer capacity is the ability of the buffer to resist pH changes. So high capacity would mean that you have high concentrations of both the weak acid and its conjugate base. And moreover, you want these two species to be equal in concentration. The pH of the buffer is determined by the henderson hasselbalch equation shown here. And when the concentration of the conjugate base is equal to that of the weak acid, then this ratio becomes 1. And we basically are taking the log of 1, which is 0. So at this point, then, the pH of the buffer at highest capacity is that of the pKa. Buffer range is the pH range over which the buffer is effective, meaning it's able to minimize pH changes. And typically, we know that it's most effective when the pH is exactly equal to the pKa, but the effective range is much broader. So, for instance, we can have a ratio of 10 to 1 of whether it's the weak acid to the base or the base to the weak acid. In this whole range, the buffer would be effective. We would come back to the henderson hasselbalch equation and plug in this ratio of the base to acid as being 10 or 0.1. And both the logs of these values would lead to plus 1 or minus 1. And so the buffer range where it's effective is when the pH moves from pKa minus 1 all the way to pKa plus 1. And right in the middle where it's equal to the pKa is when it's most effective. 